Aloha. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a normal distribution curve. Now, to make this normal distribution curve, let's use the data from the S&P 500, aka the market. The functions we're going to be using in this video are the if function. We're going to show you how to remove duplicates. We're going to generate random numbers with the random number generator. We're going to use the frequency function, and we're going to use arrays. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to answer a question. Based upon the historical data, what is the probability of the market going down tomorrow if the past few days it was up? So for example, if the market has been going up for the past few days and it's climbed 4%, what's the probability that it's going to climb further tomorrow? Or in essence, what's the probability that tomorrow is going to be a down day? Essentially, we're going to be able to use this to make money, if it's accurate. So this is the exact chart we're going to make. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need is data. So we're going to go to finance.yahoo.com. Select the S&P 500. On the left side, select historical prices. And we're going to download the daily data for the S&P 500 for the past 65 years. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can hit download to spreadsheet. Here we go. The first thing we're going to want to do is let's put it so we have the oldest to newest. So let's sort it by, so to highlight everything, you're going to hit Control Shift, right arrow, and hit the down arrow. Right click it, and hit sort. Let's do oldest to newest. Now these are the three formulas we're going to be using to gather our information from this data we downloaded. We're going to want to get the daily changes of the market, the up movement before it goes down, and the cumulative amount that moves up before it goes down. Let's go ahead and move this all up. And you have to make it look pretty. Out. Now if you look down the information section of this video, you're going to be able to find all these formulas. This formula is going to calculate the daily changes. Just go ahead and put that in row 3. This formula is going to calculate the amount that the market moves up before it goes down, but it's going to accumulate it by compounding the percentage. It's the same principle as compound interest. If the market moves up 1% today and then 1% the next day, it didn't go up exactly 2%, it went up over 2%. And then this is just going to grab the exact number that we want, the cumulative number before the market goes down the next day. So to show you what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and make this all percentage. So here we have the daily movement, and you right click the bottom, or double click the bottom, it's going to copy and paste that down. And we're able to see that the market moved up this day, moved up this day, moved up, and then it moved down this day. But this one's going to calculate the cumulative movement before it goes down. So it moved up this amount, but as a cumulative total since day one, since it began moving up, it's been 2.5% higher. But we don't want these numbers right before it. We just want this number. So that's why we're going to use this formula right here. Formula number three, paste that in, and it's only going to show us the number we want. So right there, it matches up, matches up. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, now let's grab our data. Let's make a curve out of it, so that way we can take this data and turn it into information. The difference between data and information is that you're able to use information, provide some some type of use. Paste all that data as values, make it pretty with formatting, and now we're going to re remove duplicates, hit the data tab, hit remove duplicates, bam, now we have all the empty cells removed. Okay, to create our curve, let's label this first, this is the actual data we have, 
So this is from the actual market. And we're going to generate a second curve, a perfect curve, to show you how well our curve matches a perfectly normal distribution. Center it, wrap it. Okay, so to generate numbers, we're going to have to grab the average and the standard deviation from our market data. Average function is easy. It's going to take the total of all these numbers and divide it by the amount of numbers we have. There it is. And we're going to grab the standard deviation. And that is STDEV. This function works all the way back on Excel 2007. Go down. Bam. That's all the information we need to create a perfectly normal distribution. Let's make that bigger. Now we're going to want to use the data analysis button. To grab that, you're going to go to options add-ins, data analysis tool pack, hit go, data analysis tool pack, hit OK, and then this should appear. You're going to select data analysis and select random number generation. Number of variables is the amount of columns of information you're going to have. So we only need one column of data. We're going to create 3,500 random numbers based upon our average and standard deviation. We're going to create a normal distribution, and then we're going to input our mean. It's a percentage, so don't forget the, the zeros before. So we're going to type in 0 0.014933. Then our standard deviation, so it's 0 0.015183. Don't need to put anything for random seed, and our output range should be right there. Hit OK. And bam, we got a bunch of numbers. Okay, we're almost done. We need some bin numbers, and then we're going to get the frequency of our actual figures and from our generated numbers. By doing this, we're going to create a histogram, which will enable us to create a normal distribution curve. make this look pretty and let's wrap that text perfect so a bin number is going to be our x-axis for a normal distribution curve 99 percent of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean so we're going to take the mean and let's create the lower end of our distribution curve and we're going to take the standard deviations and times it by 3. So the average minus 3 times the standard deviation. That will be the bottom of our, or the very left of the x-axis. Then we're going to take this and we're going to add the standard deviation to it. Let's lock it. And this is going to help us create the top of our x-axis, or the very right of it. Let's drag this down. And let's make sure we have, let's go, let's see, how many cells is that? The total of eight? Perfect. It's time to use the frequency function. So we're going to highlight all these. Oops, went too far down. There we go. Frequency. This is going to see how often these numbers appear in our set of data. So control shift and down arrow will highlight all that information. We're going to hit the comma and select our bin, which is these numbers, aka the x-axis. Now here's the tricky part. Make sure you hit control shift enter because this is an array, meaning we're going to input this um, function into multiple cells at once. There we go. So this is going to become our x-axis. This will become our y-axis. 
but let's do the same thing for our generated numbers. So that way we can make that perfect distribution. So frequency. Scroll down to generated. Control shift down to highlight it all. Select the bins array. Control shift down. Close it and then control shift enter. Let's go ahead and let's make that distribution curve now. Highlight all this information. Hit the, the insert button and let's do a scatter plot with smooth lines. Boom. Wow, that looks really nice. That looks very normal too. But let's compare it to a perfectly normal curve so that way we can see the variance. So select the data. We're going to add. Let's name it frequency. Generated frequency. Let's grab our x axis as we know as the bin error, bin numbers. You know what? Let's just grab the numbers only just in case. And then let's grab our y axis, which is these numbers. Hit OK. That looks beautiful. Let's go up and let's make it easier to read. Let's go with layout number eight. Now let's do, let's name it S and P up before down probability. Beautiful. Wow, now we can interpret this. Looking at this, as we can see, most of our data is to the left of this, meaning the probability of the market moving up tomorrow, if the market's gone up 4% over the past couple of days, the probability of it being positive tomorrow looks about 15 to 10%, which is very low. If the market's going to move up only about, if there's a probability of it moving up only 10 to 15%, that means there's a likelihood that the market's going to go down tomorrow. This is how we can use this curve to invest. So if we think the market's going to go down tomorrow, we should short the market. But if the market's only gone up this much cumulative, then there's a high probability that the market's going to be up tomorrow. Now, of course, this is not perfectly scientific because we didn't remove outliers and do other functions to make sure it's perfect. But I hope you can be able to see how you can create your own normal distribution curve. It's very simple. It involves gathering your information, formatting it, creating a histogram, and using a scatter chart. Hopefully you're having a great day and you can go make some money. Thank you. So